This is Retro Hammer, Terminator Marine from 1988. Within the first year of the release of Rogue Trader Warhammer 40,000, the Space Marine arsenal had grown to include a wide variety of equipment and troops, including the Space Marine's RTB-01 plastic box set, the Rhino APC, the Land Raider battle tank, numerous metal miniatures and Dreadnought armour suits. This was not to be the full extent of their early weaponry, and in the last month of 1988, a new type of Astartes personal armour was released in the form of a single metal miniature, the Terminator Marine. This was a super heavy suit of personal armour, whose purposeful name was in no doubt influenced by the 1984 James Cameron film of the same name. This started an intense burst of creative experimentation, spanning five short months at the end of which there was no less than four separate armour designs had be, that had been released, three of which were rapidly consigned to history. The final design, which became known as Indomitus Pattern Terminator Armour, was to become a familiar part of the Space Marine Armoury, where it is still featuring prominently today. However, I now return to the origins of the Terminator Marine and look at the three early designs and the early rules for these models in game, precursors to the style of carried forward and a concept that was to gather a life of its own. First came the Space Hulk board game, and then the 1993 computer game of the same name. This legacy continues to this day with the imminent release of a 2016 Deathwing console game. The Terminator represents the ultimate panoply of war a single warrior can don, and it allowed the Space Marines to take the fight to the most dangerous opponents in the most extreme of environments. So, thank you very much for joining me for another episode of Retro Hammer. And today we're going to look at the Terminator, the origins of a Terminator Marine. Um, of the Terminators are a, are a familiar part of any Space Marine army um, that we have uh, today. And it all started with this one metal miniature uh, sculpted by Jez Goodwin uh, that was released in December 1988. So let's uh, let's have a little look around this model. So this was a it was a two part metal miniature. Um, just going to take take the base off. It was a two part metal miniature. Um, the whole torso, arms, and storm bolter are cast as a single piece, and a separate item uh, is the uh, back banner. Um, and this was to be the only Terminator ever produced in such a well, generally produced in such a way, the majority, after this, Terminator models were multipose models with uh, separate arms at least. So the general design is was quite unlike the marine armour that came before it. The helmet is heavily recessed into a, into a, heavy, into a thick armoured chest plate. The shoulder pads, pads reach an enormous size. Um, the leg armour has exo uh, exo armor braces um, he wears a power glove and then also carries for the first time a storm bolter and the storm bolter is wielded with one hand as if it were a pistol so let's look around this model these used to um, these were originally sold singly uh, they cost £1.25 for a single model of the base so uh, Compare that to today's prices. Um, notice how there was no backpack. Uh, prior to this, all Space Marines had had a backpack um, to carry their life support and power systems, but here that's gone. And perhaps, perhaps that's why the shoulder pads were so large. Perhaps those shoulder pads included uh, the life support equipment for the Marine. Who knows? Here we have the first representation of a Storm Bolter. So this is interesting in that it has a, a dorsal and a ventral ammunition clip, along with a lateral um, clip mounted on the right-hand side. Uh, and then there is also a targeting scope alongside that. There's a, like an array of targeter sensors there. Uh, and this was consistent with the rules for this model because um, the original Terminator were armed with a power glove, a storm bolter, and a targeter, as well as their armor. So yeah, it's a it certainly was a, a departure from earlier Space Marine models, and as I said, this was the beginning of a 
a bit of a creative journey, which was to last a short few months and lead to the final pattern of Terminator armor we recognize today. And interesting to note as well, when Jez Goodwin sculpted this, uh, he tagged it as EXO. So at that point, um, perhaps they had uh, yet to arrive on the name of Terminator Marine. And indeed in the <coughs> early rules, um, the term in the original White Dwarf article, the term EXO armor uh, and Terminator Marine are used interchangeably. So yes, let's uh, let's not. So first catalog dis appearance was here. So there you go, Terminator Marine. Um, this was around. This was December nineteen eighty eight, around the time of White Dwarf one hundred eight. I don't actually know if this was from White Dwarf one hundred eight or not. I don't have a copy of uh, of one hundred eight uh, to anymore. So uh, I can't be sure of that. The other the other. Uh, the other early Terminators I'll show you, I have been able to trace back to their um, corresponding White Dwarf articles. So, uh, a month was to pass uh, to January 1989, and then a second type of Terminator armor made an appearance uh, in White Dwarf 109. Uh, and this came at the same time um, as the first set of rules to play the Terminator Marine. So, let's look first at this new Terminator. And there he, um, there he is, um, in, in this instance, in the uh, colours of the Ultramarines, fighting uh, two demons, two blood letters of corn. And there is a description of the Terminator itself. These were sold in packs of two uh, for two pounds fifty, if I recall correctly. And they were a four-part model, so the um, the arms were separate, and then you had the torso, and then the you can just see the armoured hood on the back, that was uh, separate as well. And this suit had a very different feel to it. It almost looked like a, like a hard space suit that you climbed into through the back. So it had a very different feel to Jed Goodwin's original. And this was um, sculpted by Bob Naismith, um, of course, the, uh, um, of Imperial Space Marine fame. <coughs> so yeah, very different. Um, he's got a power glove, but the storm bolter is actually mounted on the side of his uh, his wrist, uh, so uh, a style only seen in that model and never again. So let's uh, let's now just go to the original article on the Terminator Marine, see if we can find it in amongst here. There was a uh, back in the early days, you got there was all sorts of rules in every <coughs> early edition. Excuse me. Uh, I mean, White Dwarf 109, for example, included the uh, first Guardsman Army list. And here was the original Terminator Squad's Army uh, article and rules for use in the game. This is quite a well-known picture. Uh, this is Jed Go the Jez Goodwin style original with the Revenbo uh, motif on his armour. And then here we have the Naismith style Terminators in the uh, army list entry. And then a, a nice little uh, adaptation of a famous quote by the Duke of Wellington there. But yeah, I mean, at this early stage, <coughs> it was established that Space Marine Terminator armor had a saving throw of 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. Um, and this was at a time when Space Marine armor was still only providing a saving throw of 4 plus, so it was. Um, significantly more potent uh, than it might appear today. Uh, obviously, two plus save versus a three plus armor save, although the dynamics are very different with the AP system. So then, so another month went by, White Dwarf 110 came out, and another suit of Terminator armor made an appearance, and that was this guy here, the Terminator Marine and Gene Stealer. Um, none of these guys really, apart from the first one, which had the XO armor, or XO, designation. The rest of them didn't really have anything to mark them out and that's a reflection of the experimental nature of these models. And Games Workshop was clearly looking for what what sold well and what what, what they thought had a good style and and this guy here uh, facing off against uh, what was to become their nemesis opponent uh, was <coughs> excuse me shaping up to be the final finished article. We can see 
He has a, a recognisable storm bolter arm, a recognisable power glove. The legs, the upper legs, um, are in the original, the style of the final Terminator armour. Um, and the helmet, the helmet's very different. And while that wasn't to be used beyond this model, it, something very similar did make an appearance uh, on the Mark VII Aquila armour that came a little bit later. So there you have it. Um, three different marks of Terminator armour in a few short months. And in White Dwarf 112, on the catalogue page, indeed all three were shown. The original, the, the, the Cobra, and then the, almost like, the 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 set the second version by uh, um, Jez Goodwin, but by White Dwarf One Twelve, um, these models were already, or these designs were already at the point of obsolescence, uh, and it was at the time of White Dwarf One Twelve that the final pattern of Terminator armor the design was released, um, and this is a picture. Uh, of the box art for the Terminator Squad box set. Uh, and there you go, Marines in Tactical Dreadnought Armour. So this was to become what's known as Indomitus Pattern Terminator Armour. And yes, I, I can remember buying that box set the month it came out and uh, this was a cover to the box and uh, and that this piece of art was um, by John Blanche actually. Um, yeah, and one of the, fir the first um, time Terminators were shown in the Blood Angels chapter, and uh, that was to become a, uh, a long and famous association. So yes, in the space of five months, four types of armour had come out, and, uh, and three of them were very quickly, um, <coughs> very quickly abandoned. Um, and the favoured type of the armour mark became the Indomitus pattern, And here we have an example. This is a model from an early production run of the um, Terminator Squad box. Um, I bought this a month it was released back in uh, '89. Uh, it's been in my collection ever since. Uh, obviously, you know, a paint job of the time, but you know, I like him and I, I keep him for nostalgia value. So yeah. Putting these two alongside each other, um, very different styles of armour and perhaps the only real similarity between the two is in the Storm Bolter design, um, which, you know, we can see some similarity between the two weapons, <coughs> but apart from that, um, Apart from that, this uh, this original type, his style was very much uh, lost and did not um, it was not carried forward. Although perhaps of recent vintage, the um, Cataphracti pattern Terminators, you know, perhaps capture a little bit of his style with the very large shoulder pads. Um, although they were based on a concept sketch by John Blanche, I believe, but. It does make me wonder if they were a slight nod back to this guy. So yes, um, so yeah, these this guy the in, when they were released, the Terminator Squad box cost nine pounds ninety nine and contained eight models. So they were um, yeah, they were pretty good value back in the day. <coughs> Excuse me. So yes, there you have it, um, the Terminators, the early Terminators. I have to admit, at the time, um, the original Terminator Marine didn't really appeal to me, uh, and I, I never actually bought one. Um, I, I can I can still picture it in my mind's eye seeing uh, lots of them on the racks of uh, Games Workshop um, in their little lo looking lonely in their little blisters for one pounds one pound twenty five each. Um, but no, I never bought one, and it was only much more recently that I. Um, Got interest in the interested in the model, um, and over the course of the past few months this year, I um, had a little eBay project and uh, decided I was going to uh, do a retro Terminator squad, and uh, 
yeah, probably after about five or six months of carefully auction watching on eBay, I'd uh, I managed to assemble a squad of five, including one with the um, back banner. If you buy one of these guys, um, new, uh, unpainted, they are selling for around forty pounds a go with the back banner. But if you shop around, particularly if you're prepared to buy ones caked in paint, you can get them for uh, somewhat cheaper prices than that. So there you have it, the origins of the Terminator Marine, the ultimate in, um, in personal armour in the Warhammer 40,000 universe. Um, with the appearance of the Terminators, perhaps they were lacking uh, a, an opponent in a way, and that opponent was to, uh, was to uh, materialise in the form of the development of a gene stealer. Uh, and of course, the Gene Stealer then went on to be the protagonist in the Space Hulk games. And the Space Hulk games led into arguably Games Workshop's first really successful forays into computer games licensing with the uh, Space Hulk computer game. Uh, and indeed, that is very much the case that uh, in a few days' time, uh, the new Deathwing console first-person first tactical shooter is going to be released. Uh, so the legacy of the Terminator continues to this day. That was Retrohammer. Thank you very much for listening, and I'll speak to you next time. Goodbye.